is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, there may in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand this is the day the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it let us pray almighty and eternal god our heavenly father we give you thanks that you have once again brought us safely through another night into a new day and into a new week and now as we lift our voices to you and open our hearts to your spirit Hear our reflections, feel our presence as we feel your presence, that by coming and worshiping at this hour, we will be better able to meet the challenges of this day and the coming week. We ask and pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forget those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Today's scripture reading is from Mark. Chapter 6, verses 14 through 29. The death of John the Baptist. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying John the Baptizer had been raised from the dead. For, the, for this reason, these powers are at work in him. But others said, this is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet. Like one of the prophets of the old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herod Her Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have a, your brother's wife. And Her Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted, him wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous man, a righteous and holy man. And he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it. And he solemnly sw swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give it, give you even half of my kingdom. <clears throat> she went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the Baptist, the baptizer, immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of the regard of his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with the orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came in 
they came and shook his, took his body and laid it on in a tomb. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, much has happened in the world this week from a pope who had surgery and uh, to the uh, assassination of a president in Haiti and unrest there. In many parts of the world still uh, challenged by the uh, virus. Uh, so, uh, but uh, we were spared from much that could have been this week and uh, through the storms. And so we are blessed this morning and we're here, we're safe and uh, and uh, able to give God thanks. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, our Heavenly Father, you who are the creator of all that is seen and unseen, and you know us better than we know ourselves. You put the world in order and leave it to us. And uh, it's a great responsibility. And so we are here this morning knowing that we are not alone, that you walk with us day by day, you hear our voices, you hear our cries, you know what troubles us, the deepest parts of our lives. So we lift up those things that are on our prayer list, those people, their situations in life, we lift up the leaders of our world who have that responsibility to serve their citizens. We lift up those who have chosen evil when they could have chosen good. We lift up those who are in Afghanistan who are now undergoing another change in their lives. Still the war, but a little different now. Help them to find a way towards peace and justice at the same time. We lift up, O oh Lord, the needs of those in our community, those who in the past recent weeks in the community beyond who are dealing with the heat of the far west of our nation and those who are still recovering bodies in Miami. Bless all those who mourn and bless those who struggle as they adapt to the circumstances they find themselves in. Help them to know that your spirit is with them and that when in need, all they should do is reach out. And so we are grateful then, Lord, for those and give thanks for those who with open hearts, hands, and the voice that you have given help to alleviate the stress and the illnesses of our world. Give them continued strength to be your good witnesses. Continue to be with us as your church here and our neighboring congregations as we continue to seek to serve you through the oneness of your spirit in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Shady, shady green pastures so rich and so sweet God leads his dear children along where the water's cold flow bathes the weary one's feet God leads his dear children along sometimes on the mount where the sun shines so bright God leads his dear children alone. Sometimes in the valley, the darkness of night, God leads his dear children alone. Some through the waters, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. 
some through great sorrow, but God gives us song in the night season and all the day long. Though sorrows befall us and Satan oppose, God leads his dear children along through grace we can conquer defeat in our lives god leads his dear children along away from the mire away from the clay god leads his dear children along away up in glory eternity's day God leads his dear children along. Some through the waters, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives us song in the night season and all the day long. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. So did you hear the choice that was in the gospel that was made? Herod had a horrible choice that was before him, but he didn't see it as horrible. At that moment of making that choice, it was, it was out there. Anything I can do for you, I will do. Any gift you request, I will give to you sure how to preach that. And so I have gone over to uh, uh, a passage uh, that is actually uh, from Ephesians, and I'll get back and show you how it ties. Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 1 through 14. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestines us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. And I'm going to stop right there. And that's my first part of a three point here. The thing I really appreciate uh, Paul doing is he was very orderly in his letters. He, he, he must have read them over and over before he let them go uh, out. And, and, uh, and so I want to speak about this first part. See, he was well-versed in Old Testament. He also was knowledgeable about how to get people's attention and to bring up something familiar so that he could show them how it becomes a reality in their lives today and not just history. And this is one of those places because he says, God chose you to be holy and blameless. And they go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's from the book of Moses. Yes, yes, back in the Old Testament. Yes, he came to us in Egypt. And what did he want us to do? He called us to be children, to be witnesses of his presence, his love, his mercy, his grace to be a holy people. Not a people unto themselves, but a holy people that would welcome and bring people together to serve God's will and purpose. Now, it does mention that little bit of, of uh, predestined. And that simply means that God thought ahead. I don't know about you, but I used to tell him at camp before we got there, when I was training the, the uh, counselors, I said, always have a plan B, because plan A is not going to always work. Always 
think ahead, let's think ahead. And, and, and one camp, we got to plan B and, and one of the, the first year counselors says, is it time for C yet? Because <laughs> plan B wasn't working either. And that I think is the predestined we have with God, that God looks farther and says, well, this is what is possible but this is what I know can be from these people. So back to the letter. In him we have redemption through his blood for forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding and he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he proposed in Christ to be put in effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and earth together under one head, even in Christ. Now Paul is saying, in a sense, you and I both know we haven't lived up to that first part. But it's okay, because God has plan B for that too. Don't worry about it. God's taken that plan, and you have, by accepting Christ, you have accepted the blood, the forgiveness, the grace that is offered. Why? And he does it again, as he did in the last paragraph, to serve, <laughs> to be that holy people. He hasn't given up. He's given you choice to be holy and blameless, a choice to be among the redeemed, even though far from being perfected. And then in the last part of the reading. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal the promise of the Holy Spirit, who is the deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are in God's possession to the praise of his glory. Chosen to conform to his purpose, to his plan. Chosen, not made, but given the opportunity. Chosen to hear the word of truth and to act upon it. And he says, and, and, and the proof of, of your joining up to this plan is your baptism. You knew you needed it. You made a witness of it. And it's yours. So don't worry about it. Live to the praise of God. Now I want to go back to Herod and John. Because John had a, a, a part in this plan for salvation. And one might think that once he baptized Jesus, the plan was over. But no, John had other things that he felt needed to do. I don't know if any of you are watching the uh, program, The Chosen. Tonight's the last episode of the season two. And uh, the pastor who's writing those scripts has a good uh, insight into people. And gives John, John comes out crazier and yet funnier than I ever thought he could be. But it did remind me of his purpose, that he had a purpose. He was the last of the great prophets. And what did the prophets do? They spoke out. And what did the prophets know? Every one of them died for doing it. And yet they did it. But not for their own glory. But really to help people realize how serious it was to make a change. And Herod was in this wonderful position but what we know of Herod as other Herods of his time before and after power you don't want to give up it's yours and you're going to use it and Herod was was a Jew who was sort of Roman Jewish he was trying to keep peace with everybody but he chose the good life and wanted a good life and much like David he was listening to God and David took on Bathsheba and had the general murdered. We're talking Herod's repeating a past mistake. And John just wanted to say, hey, just admit it. That's all John wanted. 
the important part in that passage is he couldn't admit it publicly, but he knew. And so to safeguard John, he put him in prison where he could watch him, and he was okay. He could have had him killed at any moment. But that's just adding more on to his plate of sin. He thought everything was good. But eventually the things that are bad for you hurt you. You can escape it, but eventually it comes around. And the day of reckoning came for Herod. Herod chose to serve himself rather than God. He chose to reject that opportunity that John gave him of grace. Just confess and let it be done with. Herod chose the world. There was some caution in his choice. He protected John. But there was a lack of wisdom. It wasn't a choice that was long <laughs> because evil was there still in his presence. And as Flip Wilson says, the devil made him do it, maybe. It's still a choice. Still a choice. Today, we just remember what Paul says. God has a plan, but it's our choice. It's a good plan. Got A, B, and C, and D. There's grace always abounding because God desires us to be his faithful servants, to serve the goodness of the world and to lift up those who are hurting. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, Grateful are we for those who you sent in ancient times, who spoke words of truth to the powerful and words of truth that still could be spoken to the powerful in the same way. But gracious God, for us as we are here this day and mindful of who we are and mindful of the imperfections we live in, we ask that you continue to put yourself before us, that we would always see your plan and that our choice would be of you. By making that choice, enable us to be your good witnesses, to be those people of holiness, those people of witnessing grace and forgiveness and those who witnessed that it came at a great cost to you, all for your love of us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh-oh. Yeah, I left my bulletin somewhere. But that's all right. I know the affirmation of faith is next. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, because I could do it from memory, but I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> Let us join together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. I'd ask that the deacons come forward. Beloved in Christ Jesus, the gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, Jesus was raised from the dead, appeared to Mary Magdalene, and on that same day sat at the table with two disciples, 
and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. We give thanks to God for calling into being creation and raising us from dust by the breath of the Holy Spirit. We remember the covenant made with Israel and all who in faith and hope enjoyed the same. We rejoice that God calls us to reconciliation through the living covenant established in the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We gratefully welcome the presence of your Holy Spirit in the church. You have gathered here and wherever the body of Christ gathers in all places and times. We proclaim the joyful mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and take, said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, he also blessed it. Giving thanks to God, he shared it with his disciples and said, drink ye all of this, for this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood shed for you and for all, so that sin is forgiven. Drink this in remembrance of me. Together, the unison blessing. Gracious God, bless us as we share this meal, that we in partaking of the bread and cup are reminded of your love as our Heavenly Father, who with Christ and the Holy Spirit lives one God forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray together. O God of majesty and grace, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us this day and forevermore. Amen. to 